Hey friends, I'm Ariel and this is the Grace Roots Gardening YouTube channel. Um, I have been not doing a good job on garden tours. Uh, just life happens and sometimes you have to let some things go and for a while this summer that was garden tours. So I tried really hard to do weekly and it just didn't happen for me. But I want to do this garden tour today as an end of summer garden tour. So that way you can see how the things you saw me plant earlier in the season ended up and see what I'm doing to transition to have a really good fall garden. So come along, let's see what we've got going on. So this bed over here had onions and garlic, but I've pulled all of that and I've been growing a couple of sunflowers and also lots and lots of green beans. We're getting to the point where these are ready to pick. Um, I'll have some full size, but that is the teensiest little baby green bean. And all those little flowers are the bean pods. Each of those will turn into a green bean. Um, so I've got lots of different beans on here. I've got some purple beans. I can't wait. Those are really fun to grow and they look good in a basket. But I'll tell you, when you cook them, they turn green. But those are some purple beans, aren't they pretty? This is all green beans in here. I grow a lot of green beans in my garden. They can be ready in like 50 to 60 days from when you plant them. So these are perfect to get in for a fall garden if you plant them now. I think fall beans do better than um, summertime beans. I think that they just do better. They're gonna germinate really well in the warm soil in the summer, and then they will produce better for you in the little bit cooler temperatures before your first frost date. So if you're looking for something to grow for fall, green beans is easy. We absolutely hit knee high by 4th of July. This is my corn. So at the top, these are the tassels and these release pollen that comes down and lands on the silks. And each silk represents a corn kernel. Um, and so now we're just trying to get these all pollinated really well. And then these will fill out into ears of corn. Just gotta keep the moisture high enough in the soil and it is very dry, but there's my corn. So this bed here is my infamous, um, I apparently don't know how to garden type bed that everybody on TikTok was saying. I filled this kind of unconventionally with a lot of just organic materials, logs, straw, leaves, cardboard, and everybody says nothing's gonna grow there. Um, I am getting ready this week here in Missouri. I'm doing a fall crop of potatoes in this bed. Uh, it's gonna be the first thing I plant. Things like a transplant, um, or things like potatoes where I can just plant the whole thing are gonna do so good in here. So we're gonna plant that this week. But this is my, this is my bed. She hasn't sunk quite as bad as everybody said she was going to. This wild beauty is cherry tomatoes. These are black cherry, cherry tomatoes. They're a really good get really dark just super good flavor i love this kind of cherry tomato and they are prolific this plant was a volunteer i did not plant it and it just grew on its own i grew the same kind of cherry tomato in this bed last year and one came up a seed must have dropped and made its way through the winter and then sprouted all by itself this was all from volunteers actually two plants um but it is amazing. My cherry tomatoes, I let go wild in stark contrast to most of my indeterminate tomatoes that I prune pretty heavily. But cherry tomatoes, you just let them go wild and they do their thing. In front here, I need to tie up some of the cherry tomato. In front though, I have got um, more sunflowers. These are the Pro Cut Orange. Um, they are not a very tall sunflower. And then all these little seedlings in here are basil. I want so bad to grow a lot of basil. It just doesn't happen for me. I'm trying anyways. Please ignore my sad strawberries. They are not taking this drought very well. And I've had Japanese beetles, horrible. Um, and this bed is just beat up. I need to get out here and really clean it up. 
but the Japanese beetles do this to your leaves and I really just need to go through. Look, speak of the devils. There they are, right there. Um, I need to just go through and really clean this out good. And hopefully they will be good to start producing again for next year. This bed is pumpkins. Check that guy there out. We got a pumpkin on there already. Um, you will see in the middle, this is just a little bit more leftover cilantro that went to seed. I need to pull that. But we've got lots of pumpkins established. I started these inside the, the towers that had the peas and let them get a jump start for the season. And they're doing pretty well. Squash bugs have been a problem. I'm trying to stay on top of it. I just did a video about using a vacuum to try to deal with squash bugs. And I took a ton off there yesterday. But if you're killing the adults and you're not removing the eggs, you're still gonna keep having problems. So if you see eggs, usually I use tape to take these off. I'm just gonna pick that off and I've got a bucket of stuff right now, but you wanna get these eggs off the plants because each egg can turn into an adult squash bug and each adult squash bug can lay 250 more eggs. So if you don't break that population cycle, you're gonna perpetually have a problem. So that's what I'm trying to do is get squash bugs under control. But in other news, the pumpkins are looking really healthy. They're hanging in there. We're having a really bad, bad drought this summer. Um, we had a very, very damp spring and then just a very bad drought this summer. So hopefully these keep on going strong and then we'll get some more fruit set as the weather cools down. I get that question a lot about, I'm seeing flowers, but I'm not seeing any fruit. And in the summertime when it is over 85 to 90 degrees, your plants will still set blossoms, but it is very hard for them to set new fruit, like over 85 to 90 degrees outside. You're gonna see blossom drop on your tomatoes. You're gonna see blossom drop on your peppers and on your squash, your spaghetti squash, your cucumbers, you're gonna see a lot more male fruit than female fruit. It just, that's the way it goes in the heat. So with that, I'm trying very hard to just get my plants across the worst of the summer. And then as it cools off, keep what I can healthy so that we will get really strong harvest and lots of fruit set for the fall garden. So hang in there, it does get better. This has been my worst year for peppers ever. Um, I have really never had a ton of pest issues with peppers and I had some kind of beetle get over here and like just decimate every pepper plant I have. It's not a hornworm. I would see those and this happened to every pepper plant I have over here so fast. I'm thinking I'm probably going to come through and prune off a lot of the damaged foliage, but I didn't want to take too much off so that way the plant could maybe still photosynthesize enough to grow new healthy leaves. But I've never ever had something come through and just destroy all of my peppers so fast. I'm still getting some, like um, I picked some jalapenos yesterday. That's a not a pino. It's like a, like a jalapeno without as much heat. Um, but yeah, they, this has not been a great year for peppers for me. I'm hoping, like I've got lots of buds. I'm hoping that for fall, we'll just get these peppers recovered from the pest damage and then have a better, better harvest in the fall. I can keep these peppers going until my first frost date, which is like October 20th, roughly somewhere in there. I need to look exactly, but that's pepper flower. So hopefully we're going to get past the really bad pest damage and see these guys turn around. One thing I've gotten asked a few times, if it's normal for your peppers to have like black spots on the stems, it is completely normal. So if you see that, that's just their stems naturally. Don't be concerned there, but hopefully we'll see some production out of these. I'm so jealous when I see people just picking, picking tons of peppers because I am not. Holy green beans. Um, these are a bush bean. And this is a bean plant trying to put out runners. Like, they prove me wrong all the time. 
I say that bush beans don't put out runners and then they do. Um, again, same thing that got my pepper plants has been in here eating on the beans. I've been doing some diatomaceous earth in here, trying to get that under control, but I need to do a good picking because I've got tons of beans that are the perfect size. I just try to pick beans on a day where I'm going to be able to go in and process them because they don't keep for very long in your fridge and I freeze a lot of the beans. So they're doing good. They will keep producing. I'm going to go through probably and thin out some of these Maybe do a little replanting just to get rid of some of the ones that are looking a little bit spent. But these beans are just going to keep on producing clear up until frost. Moving on over, we have cucumbers. And these cucumbers are getting very spent. It is really normal at the end of the season for cucumbers just to get crispy like that. Um, they're just starting to struggle. And that's okay. I went ahead and I started more cucumbers from seed that I'm going to pull these plants out completely and just do some new ones. Cause these are, no matter what I did, no, like how I tried to fix it, they're just spent. They have been through the worst of the heat this summer and they're, they're pretty done. So we're gonna pull them out and start with something fresh. I will show you. Towards the end of a season, when your cucumbers are struggling, it is normal to have your fruit get all weird shaped. It won't be like even, it'll be real like goofy and off shaped. That just happens to cucumbers when they're stressed and when it's really hot out. So don't be worried. I mean, like you can still eat them. They taste fine, but they will curve and do all kinds of goofy looking stuff when they're done. Look at that. There's some squash bugs right there. I hate them. Ugh. But yeah, these guys are getting pulled. All right. This bed here, I have got zucchini and this other half of the bed I've been saving for watermelon. I planted one, two, three watermelon seeds and I had two watermelon going and then we got two and a half inches of rain in about five days so the two watermelon that I had going died from damping off which is where like the stem will get real thin it's kind of like it's just rotting from too much moisture but after all the rain I had this third guy decide to join the party so we're gonna see what he does and if I can get a watermelon out of this plant before my first frost date look I grew spaghetti squash. No, actually I just picked those. This zucchini plant has got tons of diatomaceous earth on it because I have had really bad squash bugs. But that is a zucchini right in there. And we've got, there's another female fruit. I'm just trying to suffocate these squash bugs with diatomaceous earth and I don't really know how well it's working. I'm gonna come out and do some more hand removal. Right next door. We have got this bed that has got zinnias and some herbs at the base of the zinnias. And then this is where I was growing spaghetti squash. And I lost all of my squash to vine borers. Ended up getting maybe about seven squash from three plants, which is not good. I just went ahead and took the opportunity to pull the plants. They were too far gone to save. And I'm going to do some pole beans on one side and I'm gonna do some peas on the other side of this A-frame trellis. This trellis is just um, a piece of cattle panel that we had a tree laying on the cattle panels around our lagoon and I rescued it and then turned it into this A-frame. We clipped off what we could and flattened it out and repurposed it. So now I have this really sturdy, super sturdy trellis that's just cattle panels held together with zip ties. Works amazing for heavy vining plants, um, but I'm going to do my climbing plants like my peas and my I'm gonna do some pole beans on there this this fall coming over here we have got peppers and they're again these same that same bug got these ones too just ugh. But I've gotten quite a few peppers over on this bed. Look at how much healthier those plants are compared to the other ones. They're just doing better. 
This is kind of like my jalapeno forest. These plants, these peppers have done better. Um, I don't know if there's a difference in the soil fertility or what, but these guys have done great. I mean, this one is awesome. Get all these little jalapenos. I expect big things from you this fall. Big things, huge. I cannot get over zinnias. I love them so much. They start out like that and then they'll open up into these flowers and like more and more layers of petals just keep opening up. These I believe are Cherry Queen and then these are Isabella zinnias. Um, zinnias are also super easy to save seed from. This is called a deadhead. I can literally just pop that off and dry it and then that'll be full of seeds to replant. If I don't pull the heads, if I give a don't deadhead them, these will reseed very easily in your garden. So zinnias do awesome. I ended up tying some strings to just support them because they were flopping over into the aisles. So I want to show you something. This is organic gardening in its finest. I've got ants farming aphids. Meanwhile, I've got a ladybug hanging out here, literally just having her fill of this little this little like colony here so when she's hungry she'll go over and eat some aphids and the ants just keep on raising them for their own purposes so isn't that it's gross but that is ecology that is the circle of life right there all right so this little thing here is melons, cantaloupe melons that are on an A-frame trellis made from rebar mesh cut in half, is it tied together, cost $20. Um, you get it in the concrete supplies at like Lowe's and Home Depot. But these melons have done amazing. I will say this has been an awesome year for cantaloupe and melons. They've done so good. Like those plants are prolifically producing, doing just awesome. I love growing them up on this trellis because they'll hang down. So the fruit's not sitting on the ground. They're less susceptible to a lot of sickness this way. I just keep the vines up off the ground so the vines stay dry, less chance of powdery mildew, all kinds of benefits to growing them vertically like this. All in all, I am very satisfied. These are the Hale's Best Cantaloupe, if you're looking for the seeds to do these. They have just really been amazing. I will show you an example. This is what one looks like when it did not get fertilized, like when it wasn't pollinated. Um, so if you see one like that, like it just wasn't, just didn't get pollinated. So no biggie there, but lots and lots of melons. We have picked a ton off of here and we've got more going. Um, there's a couple right there. Just very, very happy plants. My plan with this is to keep it going as long as I can. Um, and when it starts to die back, when it starts to show signs of sickness and stop producing so well, I'm gonna pull it and I'm gonna do some more um, pull beans on here. But yeah, we've got lots of melons. All right, let's take a stroll down Tomato Lane. Here. We've got Romas and these are the early cascade they're a very good just staple tomato they start out kind of yellow and then they do turn to red um over here is a sucker i've been trying to root and it's just not doing well and i've got mortgage lifter tomatoes like these have been great producers of big fat tomatoes they're doing very well come on over this is watermelon beef steak again big fat slicer tomatoes they kind of turn like a pinkish red color. Then these are Amish paste. I very much prefer these to San Marzano's. The fruit is just a lot bigger and I feel like the plant is sturdier, a lot more healthy. Um, then we've got vintage wine. I have been thoroughly disappointed by vintage wine this summer. I've not gotten a lot of fruit. It's not been as pretty variegated as I wanted. I don't know if it's gonna get a space in the garden next year. Um, then, Consuelo to Genevieve's. 
the flavor on these i've finally been able to eat some and the flavor is so good um, they make just these goofy little tomatoes but they taste amazing and the plant's been very healthy very sturdy um, this is a great example of a faciated blossom where a couple fuse together and it's like this big u-shaped tomato but that one is great um con consueloto genovese and i'm saying that horribly got brand new wine pink I've not been thrilled with this plant. It's not produced very well. Um, my black creme right next door has done okay. My fruit has just been a lot smaller, but with as dry as it's been, that's kind of to be expected. Um, over here, we've got another brand new one pink, and it's kind of the same story. I just have not gotten a lot of fruit off of this one. I do have some set higher up there, so we'll see how that's due in the fall. And then these Romas are going to town. Romas are determinate, and they set all their fruit at once. So they are doing really good. I've picked quite a bit, but lots more to come off of there. Then Cherokee Purple, which is a beautiful tomato. I've been very happy with this plant. Honestly, it's been a little stressed. Like leaf curl is a sign of stress, but the new leaves look a little bit better. So maybe it's just um, stressed in part of the plant. And then these are Kellogg's Breakfast. My favorite tomato is probably Kellogg's Breakfast. They turn a beautiful, rich yellow color and if you're looking for a tomato to be like a record setter as far as growing um in weight Kellogg's breakfast is always up there for me they grow really big tomatoes um tigerella I am not impressed with these break very easily and I don't really care for the flavor they're pretty but I don't think I'll grow them again next year I've just not been a huge fan of those and then at last but not least, these are Brandywine Pink again. So several Brandywine. These are like a potato leaf tomato. They've done pretty well. This one has outperformed the other, all my other Brandywines combined. So. All right, friends, that is my tour. Thank you for coming along with me. Um, I love being able to share my garden and help other people learn from what I'm doing. Please be sure to like this video and drop me a comment if you have any questions. I try very hard to respond. Um, also subscribe so that way you can see more. Uh, thanks so much for coming along. Have a wonderful day.